Thank you. The chair now recognizes the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Sochil Torres, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Rice. Thank you also, uh, Ranking Member Higgins. And thank you all for being here. As you know, Border Patrol is currently under immense uh, strain, partly due to an administration's metering and remain in Mexico policies, which are pushing some migrants to cross the border between ports of entry, often in areas like that, that I, the one that I represent, which is rural and remote. In my district in southern New Mexico, Border Patrol checkpoints have been suspended, and many agents have been recalled from the field to assist with processing individuals voluntarily presenting along the border. In speaking to a Border Patrol agent in my district, he said, we are not a detention center agency. We are a law enforcement agency, and I couldn't agree more. This is why CBP must be doing more to contract trained personnel to assist with non-law enforcement duties, such as feeding, transporting, and giving medical care when necessary to migrants. This would allow agents to return to their law enforcement responsibilities for which they are really trained. Mr. Perez, can you please describe how CBP is planning to allocate part of its fiscal year 2020 budget towards contracting for these non-law enforcement duties? Thank you, Congresswoman. So uh, in the uh, fiscal 20 budget as well as the, if I may, the supplemental requests, very much so the transportation, the care and feeding, um, the, uh, the uh, soft-sided facilities that we've raised, all those non-law enforcement related duties are not only already being contracted and actually contracts being pursued to be expanded because of the crisis we have at hand, but certainly in 20, those are the, exactly the type of things that we're looking to get our officers and agents out of doing and bringing on more other uh, folks to do those typical, those types of functions for us. That's great to hear, Mr. Perez. Thank you so much. And how can Congress feel confident that the funds it appropriates for these very specific purposes, such as contracting services you just described, will not be reprogrammed for the administration's own priorities? Well, I, I don't have the specific numbers right now, Congresswoman, but I, can, I will gladly get back to you on what it is we've already obligated of the funds we've been provided. Um, and actually what it is we've already begun to spend uh, this fiscal year as well, uh, you know, with respect to what it is we're asking for, again, on the supplemental that is so critically important, uh, and, you, know, with re you know, regarding the contracting and the like. So this, you know, just so that you have a, a good frame of reference of how it is we're investing all those monies. And I'm sorry, my question was about future uh, appropriations from Congress. So you, you identified that the need is still ongoing. How can we make sure that's where the money goes? Well, it's un unquestionably true, Congresswoman. We are frontline agents and officers are there to perform a law enforcement function, national security function, first and foremost, certainly a humanitarian function given a crisis like the one we have in front of us. To make sure that we are fulfilling uh, that uh, mission responsibility to keep our community safe, keep drugs off the street, keep criminals from uh, coming across our borders, that is where our focus will remain uh, and keeping, you know, again, the nation safe. And so I'm very confident that I can tell you that if and when we are able to bring on those contracts, get these types of roles filled with non-law enforcement types, that's something the agency will remain very interested in doing. Thank you. It, I don't feel the assurance that I think we need to be able to work to support you in, in what, what needs to happen. And I think if, if there's any additional words you can, can lend to that, it would be very helpful for me to continue to advocate for these continued needs. I, I want to turn to investments in our ports of entry, which are also essential to our national security. Facts show that the majority of illegal drugs that come into the United States enter through legal ports of entry. For example, according to the CBP's own numbers in fiscal year 2018, 90% of the heroin that was, se was seized at ports of entry by CBP officers, while only 10% was seized between ports of entry by Border Patrol. Yet in recent years, not enough attention has been given to CBP's $5 billion land port of entry modernization backlog, or to the deployment of drug inspection technology at the ports of entry. My colleague Ms. Rice, Rice spoke to, about NII Tech, and I reinforce the need to invest there. Mr. Perez, as a former port director and the director of field operations, you know firsthand the importance of these investments. Do you believe the administration should be giving more funding priority to decrease the backlog of CBP's land port of entry modernization portfolio and to drug interdiction systems at ports of entry, such as these non-intrusive inspection technology? Thank you, Congresswoman. I am really grateful to the Congress for what it is we've received. I mentioned earlier about the recapitalization of a huge portion 
of the non-intrusive inspection fleet. That also was, we also received an incredible amount of funding as well for handheld technologies, for you know, video surveillance and the like. And so those are investments we're absolutely looking forward to continuing to make and are part of the FY20 budget. With respect to modernization of the ports, that is also something that is a priority for us in respect to, you know, there's so many of them that are outdated. We're living that every day right now with respect to border patrol stations and ports of entry. So facilities wise, definitely, uh, you know, we have a few options there. We don't own all of those facilities. We have to work through GSA on a lot of times, but, but we also have, uh, you know, collaboration with uh, the private, uh, you know, org, uh, communities it's, uh, themselves where we can pursue some of those endeavors also. Thank you, Mr. Perez. I know I'm out of time, but I look forward to working with you in the future.